not attempt any of the stunts you're about to see. Just when all hopes seem lost, message of a new start to an unknown old great Fucking what to make your hair, boys, coming to you live, all the way from the van. And yes, I understand it's been a few weeks, so I've let you down yet again. Not my fault. I'm telling you right now, not my fault. There's nothing I would have rather do than make videos, rather than suffer with shingles and rebuild an engine. That's right, I had shingles hardcore for like, pfft, I don't even know how long. I had it for a couple of weeks before I even knew. I came out one morning to make videos and I noticed I had massive amounts of bumps all over the back of my head here. At first I thought it was from bending down under this dash and rubbing the back of my head on uh, clamps and screws and whatever is underneath there. Because as you know, half the engine on a van is on the inside, under the dash. Anyhow, yeah, so uh, I felt like absolute crap. I don't drink at all because I hate feeling drunk and I hate feeling hungover even more. And let me tell you, for at least a month straight, I felt hungover. I felt disoriented and dizzy and just blah, like crap. You know, and then I would look up and I would end up even more dizzy and feeling nauseous. And I couldn't hear right out of this ear and itchy as hell. And... Yeah, it was pretty bad. I had migraines almost every day. They would come and then disappear like an hour later, then be back three hours after that. I had squealing and ringing in my ear and it was absolutely miserable. And the only thing that could have possibly made it worse was rebuilding a van engine while dealing with it. It's my daily driver, I had no choice. Uh, yeah, so I had to suffer through it and uh, nothing went right. Nothing at all. You wouldn't believe the problems I've had with this engine. Anyhow, she's running now. I figured it out, so and I'm better. I don't have big ass bumps all over my head. And uh, yeah, we're back to making videos and back to doing fun things, unlike rebuilding a van engine. Anyhow, yeah, so what is there to really say? If you watched the videos and followed along, you knew that the front of this donor engine was on fire, which made it a pretty safe bet that the van was scrapped and taken off of the road because the front of the engine had been on fire. So anyhow, I rebuilt the engine, didn't drop the oil pan, well I did, but I did it hanging from uh, the gantry, and I didn't really feel like sticking my head underneath the engine in case it fell, so I didn't really have a look, I took a calculated risk, and I lost, big time. Here's what happened, I got the van engine in, I got it all wired up, got the plumbing done and all that good stuff, I started it up, and it knocked. <laughs> yeah. It had the same problem the other one did, only this one was minor, the crank was saveable. I needed to throw a couple of uh, crank bearings into it. Actually, they weren't crank bearings, they were rod bearings. So anyhow, I did that, put it all back together. Uh, the van would not start. Starter wouldn't crank, nothing. I had power on the dash, all that. So I thought I left a plug out somewhere, like a wire connector or something, and I searched, and I searched, and I searched. Then I started doing testing, and I found out that there's a pedal with a switch on it for the brake, and the brake switch needs to work in order to engage the starter. The brake switch blew in between testing the engine rebuild, and it wasn't something I did at all, it was just something that happened. Coincidence. So that sucked, I got that figured out and then came out ready to make a video I thought and uh, yeah the van would start and die and start and die and start and die and start and die and start over and over and over again for a week now if you're familiar with GM vehicles then you're familiar with the pain in the ass pass lock system there's VATS there's pass lock 1, pass lock 2, pass lock 3 this here is a pass lock 2 system and many, many vehicles have ended up in the scrapyard simply because the vehicle thought it was being stolen by its owner when it wasn't. Well, I took the entire engine out. I went through every bit of wiring on this van that had to do anything with the engine. I found absolutely nothing. I doubled the amount of grounds on this engine. Nothing. I had no security light on the dash. Couldn't make it come on, tore the dash apart. Found out the bulb was missing from the security light on the IPC, the instrument panel cluster. Put a working bulb in it, I still could not get the pass lock light to light up. So it led me to believe there was nothing wrong with the pass lock and it was something to do with the engine. 
So I diagnosed and I diagnosed and I pulled the ECM out and I blew all the salt out of it and I resealed it. Oh my god, I've gone through every piece of this engine that you could possibly imagine and the rest of the van. Anyhow, finally, I thought to myself, maybe the pass lock box is blown. So I came out and I tried to find it. I couldn't find it. It took me three days to find the pass lock computer in this van. Finally, I did find it and I ran aground to it. I diagnosed the computer. I found out it had no ground, which was really weird because the van has twice as many grounds as it used to and every one of them has been cleaned. Anyhow, yeah. I gave a new ground to the computer because I couldn't even find where it's broken, everything else was working, and basically, yeah, now the van starts. So, unfortunately, after all of that, I really was not in the mood to make videos. I was more in a mood to fill this seat with gas and throw a match in the window and walk away. I do have some footage. It's been a few weeks. I'm not exactly sure what I have, but I'm going to go through it. I'm going to try and make you a video tonight with whatever I have and I guess from now on it's a fresh start so in a minute I'm gonna show you where the pass lock box is in the Astro van and show you what I did to uh, get it working again uh, the rest of the van I'm sure I have clips of you seeing the new engine and the rebuilding of the rad support and all that stuff uh, you're probably not gonna learn much from this video because uh, yeah I don't know, I guess you will, if your pass lock light is not lighting up on your dash and your vehicle starts and stalls, you'll know why. So yeah, I guess you will learn something from this video. Anyhow, I really do apologize for vanishing on you once again, and believe me, there's nothing I want to do more than build that silo, cut some firewood, get this friggin' stupid van running nice again, make some money, and uh, make videos. Alright, so after many, many, many days and many problems, I finally got this thing running. I know exactly what's wrong with it, I'll tell you later. Anyhow, this shot right here is just because uh, I think I'm going to sell this van and buy a two and a half ton GMC M135 deuce. I need that. Anyhow, yeah, I just put a brand new engine and everything into this van and now I'm not sure I want to keep it anymore. There's the engine. And to do that, I had to cut the rod support there. I had to cut the rod support there. And you can come down here and see these pieces that were on each side of the rod were totally gone. All down there was totally gone. I rebuilt the whole thing with galvanized metal. The same as what that shed right there is made out of. And uh, basically, yeah, this is like a brand new van now. If you come under here. <coughs> if you come under here, you can see brand new engine, differentials been checked over, new seals and all that good stuff. And even, uh, man, I can't even tell you. The entire wiring harness, I've gone through it all. Well, I don't know what to say about that, but this old lad needs a woman again. His took off. <laughs> you know any women that love a, a good man? <laughs> yes, we must have some viewers that know some good women. We need good women, preferably ones that do not drink or smoke crack or anything like that. I know how to build cars. I know how to build cars and work. Yes, that would be an absolute bonus. Bull of the Woods is single once again, and he needs some help because we've been on quarantine working on cars. So if you need help with your car, help Bull of the Woods out with a, a woman who you probably won't need help with your car because if you have a woman that's worthy, she's probably helped you with your car already. Bull of the Woods needs a mechanic chick. Anyhow, uh, yeah, what else do we have going on? Not really a whole lot. I'm going to try and get back into the swing of things tomorrow. Oh wait! No, no. I do have something else to tell you. Uh, yeah, I guess I should tell you that for the last two years I've been away from doing the videos that I do because I've been making edited videos to expose sex offenders on YouTube and stuff and uh, I'm now kind of 
one guy in two crowds. I'm in like the redneck mechanic crowd and I'm also in like the exposing sex offenders crowd. So I gotta figure out how to get both crowds joined because I have fans in both crowds. And uh, yeah, part of the way to do that is there's a show coming. It's gonna start off being a Tuesday night uh, live stream. It's gonna be a talk show and I do have a very awesome co-host named Man With A Mic for my mechanic redneck friends. You probably don't know who Man With A Mic is, but trust me, he's friggin' awesome. I love that guy. So uh, yeah, there's gonna be a channel in the link below. Down in the detail box, go subscribe to that channel. It's called Stunt Dubby with M-W-A-M, which is Man With A Mic. And that show will be coming in a few weeks, and then it's gonna be every Tuesday night. Uh, yeah, if it rocks and rolls, we might even take it further and do a few shows a week. So that's going on. And uh, yeah, I guess now would be a great time to show you the Passlock computer and then fire this baby up. Unfortunately, all that's left is I have to put the column cover back on, put the doghouse back in the van, zip tie a few wires and go for a test drive. Anyhow, if you come in here you can see, if you don't know how a Passlock system works, I'm about to teach you. So this is your steering column. You have three tiny little wires right here. You have a key? No. Yeah. You should have a key. You better have a key because you'll never start it without it. Well, you can, but I'm not teaching you how. Anyhow, here's the key. Looks like one of those. You put it in the ignition, and when you rotate the ignition, you see the security light right there? That wasn't coming on before. So anyhow, this here key, it doesn't have a transponder or a resistor or anything in it like that. This system works because these wires get broken if you pull the ignition out the wrong way. And then there's a sensor inside the ignition that needs to rotate and feed a reading to a hall sensor in here. And then that sends a code to, I believe, the IPC, the instrument panel cluster. From there it sends a code to here which I finally found the box, everybody kept telling me it was behind the radio. And if you look behind the radio, this one's not bolted back up yet, this one is for my power door locks and stuff, but this box is where everyone was telling me the pass lock computer was. That is not where it is. It's in and up there, which is behind here, and there's no way to see it except for oh, laying down on the seats with your head jammed under the dash and looking right there so yeah there it is if you didn't know when you're working on vehicles the yellow wire and the yellow plugs always mean airbags if you cut one of these with the power on you're gonna have an airbag exploding in your face and probably break your nose or much worse anyhow that's where the box goes on a GMC Safari Chevy Astro Ugh. I'm getting too old for this shit. Alright, so now I can pull the box here. So, well, the wire is routed. Anyhow, you can see right there, there's some solder. This is a ground wire, which means that if it touches the chassis or metal or anything, it's not going to short out. It's just going to provide a better ground, so there's no point in taping it up. Anyhow, that was the problem. The black wire, I believe it's pin B2 on the pinout, needed to be grounded. It had nothing at all. So anyhow, how this system works is you rotate your key, the sensor inside the ignition cylinder, has to go past the hall sensor in the ignition housing. If it does, because you're using a key and the ignition's not smashed, it sends a code up these wires, a signal, which sometimes it goes through the instrument panel cluster, sometimes it doesn't. It may or it may not. I believe on this vehicle it does because the pass lock is connected to the IPC for the security light, which means that they are communicating Anyhow, so then your signal comes to this box, and this box builds a half a code, which I believe is like a sine wave or something like that. Uh, there's six different boxes, 
which means there's at least six different codes. There could be way more. I actually don't know. I'm not into uh, computer stealing vehicles. Anyhow, I know that this box makes half the code and then it sends a reference signal, which I believe is in the form of a sine wave, out to your ECM, which is right there. Yeah, you can see mine's all cleaned up. Yeah, and then when it speaks with this ECM, the two of them agree on a code, and if, you know, it agrees that everything's cool, it allows the engine to start without stalling. Because what happens if the vehicle thinks it's stolen, because it doesn't have the right code, or the wires have been cut, or whatever, then what it does is it shuts off power to the fuel injectors, which are down there. So, basically, there's a few things that could be causing that, like you need to calibrate your crank sensor sometimes, or if you get lucky you won't have to. That can also cause a start and stall situation, which is what I thought I had, because not only did I replace the crank sensor, I replaced everything on this whole engine. And she looks just friggin' awesome now, runs like a top. Uh, I was gonna show you the start and stall. Well, actually I can, all I have to do is disconnect this box. Here, I'm going to put the camera down for a minute. All right. So this here is what your pass lock computer looks like. You have to get the one with the right code if you're replacing it. There's six different ones, so if you're having a problem and you go on eBay, Make sure you get the matching code, or you're not going to be any further ahead. Well, you might be, but you'll have to do the relearn procedure, which is a whole other headache. Anyhow, the security anti-theft system is now unplugged. And this is what was happening to me for a week or two while I was ready to blow a gasket. Does not matter how many times you start it. It'll start every time, and then it will shut off the fuel injectors. And as you can see, there's no security light coming on, which I have dealt with probably over a hundred of these vehicles, and I've never seen one where the security light doesn't come on. Usually they go to the junkyard because you can't get the security light to turn off. Anyhow, I finally figured it out, and I will turn off that annoying beeper for a second. Plug this box back in. Where's the wire? So I plugged that back in. Now when I turn the key on, you can see that the security light comes on. It's reading the code from the hall sensor. It agrees with all the computers that the code is correct. The vehicle's not stolen. Turns off the security light. Was it fun? Well, see what I did to this poor socket? Oh no. See the crack? I see the crack and you're in the chrome. And do you see why? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Never buy cheap COVID sockets. COVID. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you get to bring that back to Princess Auto for a return? I don't think so. I don't think so either. <laughs> That's why. You think it passed for Canadian Tire? The chrome is mm. peeling off too. <laughs> no, Canadian Tire does not sell Chinese tools. Oh boy. Anyhow, comment, rate, subscribe, like the damn video, and don't forget to go subscribe to the channel down below for me and Man with a Mic. Villains, I say to you now, knock off all that evil!